silly of the budget. Finance Minister and Jaitley, they're talking about budget 2017. And to discuss the budget, we have uh, tax head of Grant Thornton, India, Vikas Russell, joining us here in the studio. We also have journalist and editorial director of Swaraji magazine, R. Jagannath, and joining us. Thank you, both of you, for joining us here. Now, first of all, I think there was an expectation that after the big shock and awe announcement of the 8th of November, there would be a lot more appeasement or placating, however you'd like to put it, in the budget. It doesn't look like that happened. Because I think uh, if you look at the overall background, there were different constraints under which the finance minister was operating. The leeway that he had last year in terms of the excise collections on the mm -hmm. crude oil prices, etc., was not available in the forthcoming budget. The actual impact of demonetization is still not clear because mm -hmm. we are still not through with the fiscal year. There is a lot of impetus that various sectors require, including the private investment, which was not happening to the scale which we all desire. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it has to be a balanced budget, and I think he has done a very fine balancing act. The areas which required stimulus, he has provided that, especially rural development, right. affordable housing, uh, to boost consumption mm -hmm. and investment at the government sector level. I think all these measures should yield result over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And in terms of demonetization, I think clearly there have been certain things in the fine print right. uh, which when implemented we yield a lot of results. For example, two things in the fine print. One, now PAN has to be mandatorily quoted at various places right. in terms of bills, invoices, etc. Mm -hmm. And when you are deducting tax or collecting tax, it is required to be quoted. If not done, tax rate of 5% or double the amount of mm -hmm. normal tax, which is otherwise required, is required to be withheld, right. a big move. Uh, individuals are not required to withhold tax on the property payments when they are making it mm -hmm. to anybody. Uh, if they are, now a new provision has been introduced, mm -hmm. where if an individual who is not required to get a tax audit done, makes a payment of 50,000 rupees or more a month, right. is required to withhold tax. Yeah. Lot of such initiatives in the budget this time. Okay, um, Arjagannathan, how important was it in this time's budget for the finance minister to signal to the people of India that after demonetization the government was not panicking, that they had a plan, they had an agenda, the demonetization announcement was a part of a larger strategy and they were just following through with that in the budget? Actually, as uh, Vikas said, actually he didn't have a great deal of scope to do uh, lots of uh, Mm -hmm. edgy things in terms of giveaways and other things. Mm -hmm. I think what he had is a limited opportunity and he needed to stimulate specific areas. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's actually done. But uh, there's one more thing that, that is constraining him. Mm -hmm. What we have not realized is that GST is kicking in from the 1st of July. That's right. Okay, And under GST, the state, uh, I mean the center has to compensate state with a 14% revenue increase yeah. guaranteed. Yeah. Right. So if you're going to have nine months GST, and if the GST collections in nine months are not good, uh, Mr. Jaitley will have to provide the money. Right. So he has to accumulate a little war chest so that he can pay those guys when, uh, uh, let's say, the initial months you know, were thing. You know, that's if, I, if I can just ask, with when you, since you're mentioning that, one of the questions I had as Mr. Jaitley was making his budget speech was, I see this money going here, this money going there. I was thinking about the GST as well as in that 14%. And yet they're sticking to the fiscal deficit targets. Is it going to be possible or is that at this point a bit of a pipe dream? No, I think he's given himself a slight escape hatch. He said mm. under certain specific circumstances, mm. he's giving himself an additional 0.5% of mm. uh, GDP yeah. as leeway. Mm. So suppose, for example, uh, uh, revenues really tank yeah. or, or at least don't grow to the normal levels in the next uh, first nine months of GST, right. then he has the fiscal deficit leeway coming. So it will become 3.7% will be his limit. Right. But he just slipped that in. But uh, basically he's given himself some space. Okay. Huh? So my guess is all this is in anticipation that something he has to be prepared for unexpected circumstances with GST. Right. Uh, on that note, we're going to slip into a quick break. More talk about budget 2017 and demonetization and how the balancing act worked out when we come back. Stay with us. CNN News 18 proposes acts for tax, the finance minister.
Welcome back. You're watching CNN News 18 and you're watching the show where we look at the budget 2017 demonetization and how the balancing act played out. We've got uh, R. Jagannathan as well as Vikas Vassal with us on the show. Uh, now, let me uh, toot our own trumpet a little bit. Uh, one of the big announcements in the budget is something that was in CNN News 18's Act the Tax proposal and I believe, Vikas, you played a significant role in putting this down. It says that there should be a cap on cash transactions post demonetization in order to expand digital transactions cash transactions should be capped in fact this suggestion says 5 lakhs the finance minister went 2 lakhs lower than that it's a 3 lakh cap if you can break down for us how this will take the agenda set by demonetization forward so if you look at the recommendations of the SIT committee if you look at what transpired during the demonetization regime it was expected that some kind of measure will be announced in this year's budget or near the budget in order to make sure that the ca cash transactions are reduced to the bare minimum in the economy. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, it's a big measure, and I do not think it is the end of all measures, but there will be certain more announcements which will be coming post-budget as well. Mm -hmm. Any transaction above 3 lakhs has been barred today. It's prohibited. And in case it is done, there will be certain exceptions to that. Uh, then there is a penalty of equal amount levied on that. Now today there have been many excuses when the cash is caught, okay, I was carrying it for this purpose or that purpose. All those excuses go away now. Mm -hmm. And it is clearly mentioned in the law of the land now that you cannot transact. So many of your transactions in terms of jewelry purchases or various other kind of purchases right. that you're having, whether land, property, etc., they all get hit because of this mm -hmm. now. And more transparency comes in. Either you need to make a check payment or a digital payment in order to make sure that you comply with the law of the land. Along with that, there are a couple of measures in the fine print again. Mm -hmm. In terms of business transactions, uh, they have reduced the limits from 20,000 to right. 10,000. Yeah. Donations, they have reduced from 10,000 to 2,000. A lot of measures have been there in the fine mm -hmm. print to make sure that all this work in tandem and we yield the desired results. Right, uh, that cap uh, that you were just mentioning uh, on uh, political donations from uh, it to now to 2,000 for anonymous cash donations, uh, Jagannathan, that is going to be interesting going forward. I don't think this is going to make the BJP government particularly popular even with uh, many people within their own party, but it is something they had to do to, to say that they were consistent in wiping out black money. Yeah, I think it is a good move, even though it's obviously not going to solve the problem mm -hmm. of uh, cash in uh, political things, but, and uh, there are many other things that have to follow. But the minute you reduce it from 20,000 to 2,000, I think it means that it's far more difficult, and you will have to claim a lot more donors in order to do that. But, of course, you need 10 times more donors to show the same amount of cash. So, But I think it's a good move. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the bonds uh, thing where you have to uh, buy anonymous uh, bonds which can be given to this thing, that's also a good move. I think right. we need political funding now for candidates. Once that is there, I think substantial part of the black money can come down. Vegas, can you explain to uh, possibly viewers who are as confused as I was, which is how exactly will these bonds work, at least from what we know at the moment? So based on the understanding that we got from the FM speech, a person can go and buy the bonds from the Reserve Bank. Uh, so there will be a digital trail for that, either a check payment mm -hmm. or any kind of uh, bank transfer. So RBI knows that these funds are coming from an uh, authenticated mode and authenticated person in right. such. And then that person has the liberty to donate it to any party. Mm -hmm. So there is a trail that money is coming through official channels and those beer bonds are being given to some party and that could be any party of his choice. Right. So there is a confidentiality element also which is maintained. Mm -hmm. If this scheme is implemented in all earnest and is successful, that could be a big change in the political arena that we are in today. Right, and it will be interesting to see how that works because I, I believe at least from my limited uh, Googling that this is the first time this is being done in this particular way. Uh, let's now talk about the way the budget began, our Jagannathan. The Prime Minister saying this is going to be a budget that focuses on agriculture and the rural community. We are thinking about our farmers. It's important to think about our farmers. Demonetization did take a toll on them. It happened at the cost of the Ravi crop. Now, we know, because the announcement has been made, that Manrega has seen a nearly 10,000 crore increase. We just heard the Finance Minister say in the budget speech, and he's reiterated several times since, that last year's spending was 4, uh, 47,500. So it's really, in that sense, only 
a 500 crore increase when at a time when there's been so much talk about what needed to be done for the rural community there were talks about and it's in the economic survey about universal basic income there have been talks about a one-time deposit the 60-day loan waiver not being enough maybe a 120-day loan waiver was just the Manrega enough no i think he's done several things the Manrega will take care of the short-term problem mm -hmm. because you had uh, urban demigration mm -hmm. where people have gone back because there are not enough jobs and cash yeah. so they went back so they probably needed to be taken care of in some way and the reason why the total amount has not been increased mm -hmm. is because next year you expect things to come back to normal mm -hmm. and there may not be that kind of a demand but of course the finance minister can always increase his allocations at a later stage mm -hmm. the second thing is that the two more important things that he has done for the farm right one is she is now going to allow a greater degree of contract farming mm -hmm. right that will actually uh, formalize a lot of the agriculture and make a lot of credit and other things right. available. Third thing is perishable commodities may move out of APMCs. Mm -hmm. huh? So if that happens, you are essentially starting to create a national market where you will get better prices for your products. So I think overall the flow of resources to rural areas will improve with all these measures, including the Narega. So if you take it as a whole, right. you don't need to make that kind of allocations. Right, uh, stay with us. We also have joining us now on the show our Rajiv Pratap Rudi, Minister for Skill Development. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking with us on CNN News 18. Uh, let me start off with a couple of the announcements from the speech that, uh, the Prime Minister, that the Finance Minister made earlier today when it came to skill development uh, specifically. And if you could just take us through what the implications of that will be for the youth of India. It was very clear, uh, Mr. Rudi, that. Uh, for this budget, the youth of India's job creation and skill knowledge was a very significant priority. Now, the two major schemes that were announced with fairly large allocations, 4,000 plus crores in one case, 2,000 crores in the other. Could you tell us how these allocations will work? Uh, can, I, can I just tell you, uh, there are two things. One is job creation and then, finding, and then creating that workforce or making that workforce employable mm -hmm. for that job. Now, if you look at this ministry, this there was a ministry created by the Prime Minister which came into existence two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And ever since we came in, the budget allocation from the first day it was around 50 crores. And today this ministry has a budgetary allocation of around good 30,000 crores. Now this was the last leg of that infrastructure which was required or the hardware mm -hmm. which we needed to put in through Strive and Sankal mm -hmm. for the ecosystem which we have already created. and when we used to compare ourselves with the education ministry which has 70,000 crores, today this is a ministry which has around 30,000 crores. Now the implementation part has begun already. Whether it is the NAPS scheme which is the apprentices which have to be trained after being uh, uh, educated in the right. ITIs or in uh, the skilling network mm -hmm. to the industry where they have to go where we are incentivizing them with around uh, the budgetary allocation for that is around 10,000 crores. We have another scheme called the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana mm -hmm. under which we have, we have a scheme to train on a grant basis this mobilization which takes place for those children who drop out and we have a budget of around 12,000 crores mm -hmm. and now we have an additional budget of around 6,000 crores which collectively brings it to around good 30,000 crores. Now when you say mm -hmm. we had the biggest challenges this ministry because prior this ministry was made there were 21 ministries in government of India 50 departments right. and uh, uh, and more than 100 schemes which were being called skill development schemes and mm -hmm. possibly we could not uh, really connect to them and there was too much of fragmentation. Now the ecosystem of skills development under the national skills qualification mm -hmm. framework, everyone at the central level and at the state level understands right. today or we have successfully created a language how to do the short term skilling and we still have mm -hmm. the privilege of having the ITIs which do the long-term skilling for two years, which sure. are about 13,000 institutes across the country. So between a combination of a short-term training and the long-term training, this ministry has taken up this job, which has been the passion of the Prime Minister, and mm -hmm. he monitors it personality, personally, and this right. is one scheme. So when you say with the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Kendra, mm -hmm. which was announced in the budget, that we are going to take it to 600 in the districts, yeah. are the benchmark of the quality of skilling and the definition which people must understand what is mm -hmm. a short term skilling, what is the process, what is the curriculum, what is the process of certification, what is the process right. of placement and how we connect it to the industry is a whole ecosystem which has been created through Sankalp and Strive, both the ITIs uh -huh. as well as uh, 
the state governments right. which have to partner because the central alone cannot meet this target of training uh, about uh, uh, 10, 12 million youngsters joining the workforce and the existing 400 million which is in the organized and uh, unorganized Mr. Mr. Rudy, if I, uh, if I, unorganized sector. If I may ask so you about is, some yeah. specific uh, spaces within this sort of larger framework which is uh, what exactly, how exactly does the allocation work when it comes to empowering women? We've heard a lot of people say that the budget itself doesn't specifically mention incentives for women who are getting skilled training, but of course, I'm sure within the ministry there must be work being done on that extensively. If you can tell us a little bit. You see, uh, I, uh, for me, for me, for me, it's very difficult to segregate, and mm. this is the underprivileged, whether it is the underprivileged scheduled caste or a scheduled tribe or a woman or a poor man, son who is a dropout or a farmer's child or for that matter the disabled I virtually exist in all the ministries in government of India mm -hmm. and I have to get, give that framework for whoever either either the skilling activities undertaken by me through the National Skill Development Corporation or the training partners or the states or the ministries which themselves are doing so to say that I have to segregate it and mm -hmm. and we assume and we assume that in the process we do not debar it and in the process of mobilization we do see that number of trades, for example, the sewing machine operators, the beauticians course, the mm -hmm. general duty assistants, there is a huge demand and we have also mapped spheres or sectors or trainings which are liked by the children or the girls and which are also employable or capable of creating self-employment. So it's, it would be unfair for me to segregate it, but nonetheless, if we once I look at the figures, I realize that it is good between 40-60% if the ratio has to be taken up. Uh, Mr. Rudy, uh, when we take a look at the kind of uh, budgetary allocation which has happened in infrastructure in this year's budget, and it's an unprecedented figure. Now, infrastructure, particularly the construction industry in various spheres, is one of the largest employers of semi-skilled workers. So there is going to be an increase in demand in that sphere for training and skilling as well. Well, you have a very perfect people uh, on the um, uh, in, on the several panels. Have, where is the jobs? Where is the jobs? Well, if they have to uh, understand where are the jobs, if you spend sixty-two thousand crores on roads infrastructure, this is is investment is prima facie going to get you jobs. When you mm -hmm. invest, when the construction has to take place, then there are bar benders, there are masons, there are carpenters, there are electricians, mm -hmm. there are entry level helpers, there are concrete mixers, there are drivers, there are lolly drivers. There are planters, there are landscapers. I, I would not remember all the names. Right. So the moment a large government spend is organized in the budget, that this is 62,000 crores, rural areas, three lakh crores, rural roads, this all requires huge skilled manpower. In fact, we are today deficient in providing the manpower already required in, by the industry as of now because they do not get the trained manpower. And the job is to increase productivity and increase the wage or, or wealth of these individuals is the biggest responsibility. Construction today right. requires three crore youngsters on various trades who need to be trained, but we do not have a system for that. So whether it is the auto sector, whether it is the leather mm. sector, tomorrow uh, I need about two and a half lakh drivers mm -hmm. for Ola and Uber. I don't have drivers. I do not have drivers for the heavy equipment. Uh, uh, for heavy equipment right. uh, which are which are being used in this country mm. for compactors graders dozers right, hydro right. operators so when people say where are the jobs please send it send them to me <laughs> I, I i i can tell them where are the jobs i'm struggling to increase the number of people i'm no. not talking about jobs for 50000 rupees one mm. but there are millions here who are waiting for an entry level job which could be good from 7000 to 15000 mm -hmm. if i am able to achieve that once a boy reaches there if he's capable if he's smart he finds sure. his way and in the next 2 to 3 years he's earning 30 to 40000 rupees even right. even we have shortage right, of people right. across right. the camera people who are shooting yeah. me now yeah. we do not have cameramen in this country who are professionally trained mm -hmm. i am doing this job Right, thank you so much, sir, for speaking with us on CNN News 18. Rajiv Pratap Rudi there talking about the focus, focus on skill development and job creation that has been a priority. Also, I'd like to thank our guests in studio. Thank you so much, our Jagannathan and Vikas Vassal, for speaking with us and sharing your views on Budget 2017. That's all we have time for at the moment. Uh, more analysis will continue. Thanks for watching. CNN News 18 proposes acts for tax 
the finance minister accepts. Proposal 1 introduce a cash cap in India. No transaction above rupees 3 lakhs should be permitted in cash. Proposal 2 no income tax up to 3 lakhs per year. There would be a zero tax liability for a person getting income up to 3 lakh rupees. The government acts when we ask. CNN News 18 on your side. Acts the tax impact.